We'll continue our media availabilities today with Eric Jones, driver of the number 20 DeWalt Toyota. Eric, obviously we're in your home state at your home track. What would it mean to you to get your first win at Michigan International Speedway? Well, it'd uh, be special, you know. I mean, coming home to Michigan and uh, spending some time at home and, and coming back to the, uh, you know, the track that's uh, so close to my house is, uh, is nice. And, you know, any, any first win would be big, and um, especially at Michigan. So i uh, just excited to be back here and excited to be, um, you know, staying close to home for a weekend and uh, having an opportunity to race here. We'll open it up to questions from the media. If you don't mind raising your hand, we'll bring you a microphone and state your name and affiliation. We'll start up here front with Bob. Bob Bockers, ESPN. Uh, Truex, Kyle Busch. Harvick winning all these races. Are they winning, it, winning them over you young guys on talent or experience? Um, a mix. You know, I mean, obviously they're, they're very good drivers, but... Uh, it's hard to it's hard to compete with guys that have been in the series. I mean, Kyle has been in the series for um, I don't know 15 years, and Trex is close to it. So, you know, when uh, when you have that much experience, not only in one car but as, at these tracks as well for that long, it definitely gives you an advantage. But uh, they've also got great teams behind them too. You know, um, obviously, all three of those guys have crew chiefs who have worked with them for a few years now and, and are very successful with them and just have a good chemistry together and their teams are on it as well. Uh, they don't make mistakes um, throughout the weekend and, and uh, they qualify well, stay up front. So it's a whole mixed bag, but um, you know, it's a, it's a group of things that I'm trying to obviously get right with, uh, with our group as well. You know, you want to have the same thing. So I uh, just got to keep working on it on our end, but it's, uh, it's definitely a combination, I think. Over here, George. Uh, George Simple, Detroit Free Press. 50 years uh, of the track uh, this year. I'm wondering what your favorite memories are. Uh, anything from when you were a kid? Um, you know, I I came here a couple times growing up. I'm, I didn't get to come a lot. We were racing ourselves on weekends. So um, I think I came here once in maybe 2011, 12, something like that. Um, and me and it was just me and my dad, and we got to come and hang out in the infield, and um, that was really cool. We got some passes through um, through somebody I don't remember who it was, but we got to walk around and hang out and uh, hang out in the suite down here. So um, just a fun weekend overall to uh, you know just to spend with him and and uh, be here and be around racing. And it was uh, only my first or second time coming down to MIS, and only my first or second Cup race at that time too. So it was just cool to spend the day with him and um, and be around uh, the Cup race here as well. So that was probably my favorite one. Eric, excuse me, Steve Schweitzer from the Alaska Press. Eric, you've um, found success quickly in every level of racing that you've been at. Now that you're a competitor in the Cup Series, is it a little bit frustrating that uh, uh, you can't dominate uh, the series like you have, um, um, you know, say the trucks or the Infinity? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's frustrating as a driver. You know, you go through trucks and Xfinity and um, feel like in those series you were capable of of, uh, of winning every weekend and uh you know you get into the cup series and it's just not possible you you got uh you know you got a couple guys usually that dominate throughout the season and um and last year it was truex obviously and kyle and, and this year's kind of the same story so uh it's just tough you know guys get on a roll they get the right group of guys together and it seems like it's just tough to beat them for a while you've you've seen that um you know kind of over nascar's history uh whether it be those guys or or jimmy you know back 10 years ago and um it just kind of happens so you know, just trying to uh, trying to get that level where you can win races is definitely challenging in the Cup Series, and it's um, it's it's not easy when you race against you know groups of guys that have been at it for a long time and have a lot of experience, and um, you know you feel like you're playing catch up in a way. Um, so yeah, I mean it's frustrating at times, but you know it's the weekends where uh, you are competitive and running up front, and know you can you can go out and win these races that uh, that pump you up and uh, you know keep you uh, keep you motivated to keep going after it. Holly? Holly Kay in NASCAR.com. Eric, sometimes we tend to assume that uh, drivers are going to do better at the racetracks that are in their home state or, or around there. However, you have fared very well at this track. Is there a reason for that? Do you feel particularly good about this weekend? And then I have just one more quick follow. 
Um, you know, I think it's it's a combination of things. Um, Michigan <clears throat> is a place that I do like. I, I like to race at. And uh, and I've had some good cars here in Trucks, Xfinity, and in the Cup Series last year. We had two good race cars as well. So uh, it's a combination. I think you're also a little bit extra motivated when it is your home track. You know, you want to run really well and, and uh, put on a good show for friends and family. So, um, But Michigan's just a place I've been comfortable at from the start. I, I felt like uh, I knew what I needed to do to go fast and um, had some good teammates as well to rely on for information um, to try to improve on that. And the second part of my question is, um, you know, we've, there's been a lot of talk about the young guys in the series, but if you look statistically, granted it hasn't been as many starts as the others, but somebody like a Kyle Larson and yourself and Chase Elliott have done very well here. Why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I think, uh, I think Michigan's a place that's a little bit more of – uh, a higher grip track even though we have low downforce here and it's still the cars are very on edge um, and that goes back to a lot of the stuff I think we drove coming through the ranks you know we, we came up in the in trucks and high downforce Xfinity days and learned how to go fast in those cars and, and had success there and when we come to a place like this I think we can translate a lot of things we learned in, in the trucks and the Xfinity series from the days we were we were driving them uh, early on in our careers so I think that's a part of it. You know, it's old experience that we have from some of the other cars that translate here, and I, I think that's probably a big reason why that, um, you know, some of the younger guys have been faster. Kelly? Kelly, CrandallRacer.com. So, Eric, an understanding that coming to the Cup Series is, you mentioned, more difficult than trucks and Xfinity. Have you been able then to kind of control those emotions of chasing that first win, or, or has it been weighing on you the longer that it goes? Um, no, I think you can control it pretty well. I I, uh, I really thought last year we had a shot to win a few races and was um, was bummed we didn't get to close them out and get that first win. And you know this year we've we've had a couple of good races where we've ran up front and had cars I thought were capable in, in the right situation of winning races. But um, you know it's uh, it's frustrating. I mean it weighs on you. You know you want to win your first race and uh, and get that out of the way. Um, but I, I feel like it'll come in time. You know I don't think. You look at some of the other young guys in the series, and it's necessar not necessarily a uh, a race for myself. You know, it's if they were out there winning five races a year, I would definitely feel a lot of pressure. But uh, it's something that takes time, and I want to obviously be the young guy that's at the you know the top of the heap and and uh, and running up there and winning races. But uh, it just you know, it takes time and experience, and uh, hopefully, you get to that point eventually. I'm gonna come up here to the front and left. George Poli, the Comb Daily, Eric. Uh, What's your sense of the makeup of your fan base when you're out making appearances and whatever? Um, is it predominantly younger racing fans? Is there a cross section? And do you and and do you make decisions based on appearances to to try to engage with a certain demographic or whatever? Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty big cross. You know, there's some some uh, some of your classic you know grassroots race fans have been fans of the sport for years and. Um, there's some younger fans too, as well, that um, um, are interested in NASCAR and are, are fans of me. So it's it's a pretty big mix. Um, I I don't get to uh, pick my appearances, unfortunately, with sponsors. They they kind of tell me where to go. But we have done the uh, the college tours this year, which has been good, and and trying to cater to that um, that younger fan base, guy, you know, people around my age. So um, it's a uh, it's a it's a challenge at times to uh, to find out what the right balance is of it, but uh, I think we've done a pretty good job, especially with the college tours, of trying to uh, get more people involved and and get uh, you know a younger demographic to to look at the sport. Jim. Jim Hunter, Motorsport.com. So after a weekend and you're back at JGR, you got Kyle who has four wins, and you and Denny and Daniel are still looking for your first. What do you? What is the sense amongst the three of you? Do you think is it more? Uh, what does he got that we don't have, or is it more? Well, if he can do that, then we should be able to have the same opportunity because we got the same stuff. Uh, it's not not a question of what does he have. You know, we know what he's got, and it's the same stuff that we got. They just um, have done a better job of of executing and taking advantage of it. And obviously, Kyle's a very talented driver and. He's able to really take what he's got and be successful with it. And, um, you know, this style of race car fits him very well uh, as well. You know, he's able to take this package and, and be very fast with it and, and has from the start. Um, 
I think you also look at Kyle's done a really good job of qualifying this year and has stayed up front. I, I don't, you know, I, I can't remember a time he was farther back in seventh or eighth in the last 10 races. So, you know, that, that, that plays an effect too. And um, so it's just a, it's a, it's a big combination, you know, it's not one thing and, and you can't pinpoint one thing on anyone that makes him successful um, in racing. And Kyle's just got the whole package right now. He's got a great team. Um, he's a great driver, and he's really able to take advantage of it. Is it the experience of the team itself that plays a large role as well? Yeah, I think so, for sure. You know, I mean, all that, that group has been together for a long time now. I mean, since really 2015, it's pretty the same core group. So that's, you know, that's three full years of experience um, leading into 2018. And I think it plays a big part in it. Kyle's also obviously had a lot of experience with a lot of different guys, and he's able to you know, really be a good team leader um, and, and show those guys the right direction to go in and, and how, to, um, how to be better and how to improve each week. Holly, and then we'll go over to Claire. Sorry, one last question, I promise. You kind of talked about this a little bit, but what have you found your experience to be going out and going to the campuses and, and getting the college students involved? And do you feel like for a lot of them it's watching it on TV? Is it social media? How are they following you? What is the connection there that you're able to make? A lot of it, um, when I went there and, and talked to them, a lot of them are, are more watching it on social media and, uh, and streaming rather than TV. And some of them have actually been to races before and watched it. Um, but a lot of them are, are more casual fans and watching, just keeping up the race through Twitter or, or um, you know, whatever else, Facebook, and, and not necessarily sitting down and, and watching the race, which uh, I think is pretty – uh, normal for this generation. I mean, there's a lot of sports that I'll just watch through Twitter or whatever, just try to keep up with casually um, rather than sit down and watching it all. So it's been fun, though. It's been fun to see. And there, a lot of people are interested in going to the races that are my age but just aren't necessarily sure how to do it sometimes and what the race really offers. Um, so to kind of sit there and, and show them what you can really do and the, the tailgating experience um, of coming to a NASCAR race, I think, has really opened up some of their eyes to, you know, what you can really have – what kind of experience you can really have at a race? So you've kind of converted a lot of them, it sounds like. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know about that. I mean, I, I hope I, you know, I did a few of them. But, uh, you know, overall, it's it's their choice at the end of the day. But I think it definitely, sh you know, opened their eyes, like I said, to a new experience. I mean, I, I don't think a lot of people realize the experience that racing is. It's not necessarily just showing up and, and going to the grandstands. You can do that. But, uh, you know, the, the thing is, it's the whole weekend. It's It's hanging out with your friends and either camping or tailgating in the parking lot before the race, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a whole day or a whole weekend thing. We'll wrap with Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. You seem quietly confident. You, you, you know, it doesn't seem like when young drivers would come into the Cup Series, they would be so pent up about wanting to win and succeed. It seems like you know you can do that, but you're real calm about it, right, that you don't get frustrated too easily. Is that something you think that you have? Uh, that will help you and then do you think all of a sudden we'll see these young drivers all of a sudden that patience pays off and a bunch of them start to do really well I do um, I mean I, I feel like I'm fairly calm about it you know I feel like it'll just it'll it'll come in time I, I, there's no reason to stress or, or worry about it you know I just know that we're doing all we can to, to put ourselves in that position to do it and you know hoping that we do the right things to make it happen so um, do I think all the young guys will start to kind of roll in and, and start winning some races? It's definitely possible. You know, we're all with very good teams. Um, Ryan's been very fast this year as well as Kyle Larson and Chase as well. So, um, you know, I could definitely see us all winning some races here in the coming months before the playoffs or even in the playoffs. So it would just be interesting to see what happens. You know, there's a lot of teams that are working on stuff and getting cars better, and um, it's going to be interesting to see who really rises to the top here in the next couple of months. All right. Thank you so much, Eric, for your time, and good luck this weekend. Thank you.